Caray. The winners, the people, the places, and everything that makes country racing great. This is Bushbeat on Radio Tab. Hi everyone and welcome to Bushby for another week on Radio Tab as we look back at the week that was in country racing and lots of news to bring you on the show today as we look back to the Black Hall Cup on Saturday taken out by Splits and the country stampede qualifier to Muron. At Innisfail, the Cup went to Makira and the uh, stampede qualifier taken out by Tambo's Heart. And we'll also tell you about uh, the uh, the big week that uh, Tanya Parry had with winners at both Mount Isa and Chartist Towers on Saturday. A big review coming up of the Country Stampede and Country Cups heats over the weekend. But first of all, we're going to bring you some uh, news that uh, actually broke yesterday. David Fowler had the chance on Racing Active to catch up with Queensland Racing Minister Sterling Hinchcliffe. Country racing, it's, it's a vital cog in racing's wheel, which I'm sure... You all appreciate. In fact, it's often where it all starts, whether you're an owner, trainer, jockey, or even the horse. And look, we've seen some great stories that began in the bush, but there are just as many, if not more, that actually rely on country racing as their business or indeed their hobby. And it's not just the race meeting itself, but it plays a key role in the township for any number of reasons. Now, it's fair to say Queensland leads by example in this area. And if you don't believe me, we'll just check out the racing calendar each week to see how many non-TAB meetings we run. We're a long way in front of the rest of the country in, in that area. It's probably a fair comment that over the years, country racing felt neglected, I suppose maybe through what's called the tyranny of distance uh, compared to the city. Yet, on balance and in fairness, and to their credit, the Palaszczuk government has been on the front foot investing around $70 million into country racing over the past four years. I wanted to explore this issue of Queensland and country racing further, and the Racing Minister, Sterling Hinchliffe, has been kind enough to join me this morning. Sterling, good morning. Thanks for your time. Good morning, David. Always good to be with you. You've got some good news for those uh, out in the country this morning you'd like to re release? I, I have. Um, you know, a, as you made mention of, the, the Palaszczuk government has been a, a great supporter of uh, country racing in Queensland, and today I'm really pleased that we're able to announce that we're going to continue that support and continue that commitment. Um, over the next two years, we'll see $35.2 million supporting country racing, continuing that country racing package over the next two years, um, uh, off the back of uh, the four-year commitment that we've seen uh, uh, that, that supported not only uh, uh, races in the country, but also uh, infrastructure in those uh, for those clubs. That's important. So $35.2 million, so the breakdown is... 15 million in prize money and 2.6 million in uh, of, of maintenance or, or infrastructure and that's very important because as we know some of these tracks uh, and these clubs they don't have a lot of money behind them and and, and sometimes facilities do get run down so, so that's you know prize money's great and that's a, that's a, a great announcement but i think the the fact that you're also supporting you know maintenance and infrastructure is, is a key to this as well Oh, oh, that's for sure, David. Um, with the, the you know, 102 towns across uh, Queensland that, that always look forward to their, uh, uh, their country meeting, um, whether it's the once-a-year ones or whether it's the, the, the ones that uh, hold those great events that are so important to the circuit throughout the year, um, those facilities uh, do um, have some pretty challenging environments and so uh, uh, making sure we keep them up to the standards and, 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 and take them to a step for further is really important, not only to those participants and people keen about uh, uh, the country ra country racing uh, in those communities, but it's a bit bit of a part of our um, our, our tourism uh, story as well. And we're really promoting uh, uh, the you know the, the the those experiences that people can have right across regional Queensland. I don't want to uh, make any disrespect to what I describe as city folk or city people, but I still think a lot of city people. Uh, don't get just how important a country race meeting is, particularly, say, like a cup day, because it has so much effect on the town itself, doesn't it? Oh, no, no, that's so true, David. It's, it's actually, if you, you look at the sort of um, the, the, the retail activity uh, that, that we look at and those economists look at right across the country, if you look at that in one of those regional towns, in one of those small towns particularly, um, there's a little blip up, and that blip up... Is, is these days almost exclusively in the week before uh, you know their cup their cup meeting. 
Um, and that makes a massive difference to those businesses and those communities. And, and, and it's also, it's, it's not just about the economic impact, it's also about the, you know, the, the, the mental health impact, the opportunity for the community to come together and, and share some good times, particularly you know, if, 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 say, you're going through uh, uh, a drought um, and, and things haven't been going great on the farm, the, the, the cup meeting is, is the time when everyone comes together and rallies around and supports each other and, and, and has a good time, which is important as well. I imagine the country racing folk will feel heartened by this morning's announcement. It secures their future. They feel confident in, in, in your government. But it extends out further. This is probably very similar to what we were just talking about in terms of the, the effect of the cup meeting on the, on the township. But this, this can provide jobs not just to to uh, trainers or, or jockeys or strappers, it can go wider than that. Oh, a absolutely. When you look at the, the, the jobs that are supported by uh, racing outside of the metropolitan area, it, the, the stats show that it's some 2,400 jobs that are supported right across uh, uh, regional Queensland. Um, and... and that that goes far beyond, as you say, those direct participants. It's it's the it's the important role it plays in in the uh, uh, you know in in the local economy and in the local agricultural economies. There's sometimes you know um, as as uh, a lot of uh, your listeners would appreciate, um, uh, David. Um, you know the, the horse isn't as fundamental to farming as it once was. Um, so there's a number of those um, uh, you know uh, uh, businesses that are rely upon to to support. Um, uh, equine uh, activities, and it's not exclusively for racing, but also you know other other equine activities. Um, but the, a lot of those are focused more on recreational stuff, including the racing industry. It's been an extraordinary year in general, and it, it's been a, a difficult year for country racing, particularly because we've seen a lot of these meetings, these cup meetings lost, and some of these are meetings that have you know been staged over decades, even a century. Yeah, no, no, it, it certainly, there, there's a number of them where um, it's interesting to hear the stories, uh, um, David, as I'm talking to um, uh, the, the committee people from uh, uh, clubs across the whole of uh, uh, rural uh, and remote Queensland, there's a number that have said that the only time that they've missed a meeting before was actually during the Spanish flu, uh, just over 100 years ago. So... It's interesting that uh, you know, history's repeated itself a little bit, but it's important that we help take these clubs through and take them into the next stage. And this certainly, this commitment, um, further commitment to the country racing package, uh, is 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 a boon for those clubs. They can they can look forward with some confidence about hosting uh, uh, meetings next year. And 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 I know there's been a few clubs that have had a challenge with um, the restrictions on numbers and so forth about what they think is um, uh, economically viable. But more and more positivity is coming into things all the time, and, and certainly I know this this commitment uh, beyond the life of the current country racing uh, package, which which does continue until the middle of next year. Taking this beyond for another further two years is going to provide a bit of confidence for uh, those clubs looking forward. Queensland Racing Minister Sterling Hinchcliffe there speaking with David Fowley yesterday on a Racing Active with some excellent news there for country racing participants and. I guess it's something that we've been banging the drum for a long time on Bushby that uh, quite often country meetings are so much more than just watching horses go around in circles at a racetrack. They really are the social fabric of a lot of the country areas. I know a man who has all of that very close to his heart is my partner in crime on Bushbeat each and every week is Rob Luck. Good morning, Rob. Yeah, good morning, Tony. And uh, I think David and the Minister summed it up beautifully in that uh, interview. And uh, the only two things I'll add um, is that the, the race clubs, when you look at the statistics, they support close to 400 community organisations of charities, including raising money for cancer charities, children's charities, local sporting clubs, and uh, heaps, hundreds of community organisations organisations share the race club facilities so that's just another example of that close association between race clubs and their community and particularly give credit to Racing Queensland I think Tony they commissioned a independent economic review a few years ago which got the ball rolling I think with the late, current Labor government to get this structure going for Queensland country racing and they, they produced another one in the past month which again lays the foundation of showing just how important our country racing is in both regional and community areas. Areas. We know it's an election year. We wait to hear what comes out from the other side of the, the fence and uh, hopefully out of...
part of it all, Tony. We continue to progress because we've got to say um, the things we've been saying on Bushbeat for several years are really coming to fruition and we'd love to see it keep going. Very much so. Now, the other big news that came through yesterday was the uh, country racing superstars who took home some awards at the 2020 Tab Queensland Thoroughbred Awards that Racing Queensland held I guess you could say in a virtual sense uh, rather than the, uh, a big ballroom sense uh, online. But mm. it was great to see some of the other uh, country uh, horses, jockeys, trainers and whatnot uh, recognised at those awards. Yeah, and the uh, apprentices as well and the uh, across the board there. And uh, Ellie Smith, of course, we know Ellie well on the country tracks and provincial apprentice of the year. And the country apprentice of the year, Tessa Townsend, she was riding out at Blackwell on the weekend and uh, got a winner out there. And Emma Bell, who was also there, is the Brisbane Racing Club student of the year. Uh, so those three ladies, they, uh, they wrapped up the apprenticeship awards, Tony. And Congratulations the, to them. And the premierships were also recognised, of course, the Racing Queensland Country Premiership Horse of the Year. Tango Rain for Jay Morris and Belenti Ray Herman. The uh, country premiership trainer, of course, was Billy Johnson. And the premiership jockey was Dan Bella. But we should also make mention of some of the uh, the provincial premierships there as well, where the uh, horse of the year was Absolute Arty for Ricky Vale. And the provincial premiership trainer was Stuart Kendrick. Premiership, provincial premiership jockey was Bubba Tilly. So congratulations to all of the awards winners there from the uh, the 2020 Tab Queensland Thoroughbred Awards that were held yesterday. Of course, uh, as Steve highlighted on Racing Active, Alligator Blood uh, was uh, the Tab Queensland Thoroughbred Horse of the Year. Trainer of the Year was uh, Tony Gollan and Bailey Noda having a, a wonderful, I guess you could say, Rob, transition. It wasn't that long ago that we were talking about him in a country sense on Bushbeat and here he is suddenly not only the, uh, the Sky Racing Ken Russell Queensland Apprentice of the Year but also the Garrard's Queensland Jockey of the Year. And again, just showing that importance, Tony, of that uh, that country background and grounding, or as I call it, the uh, the country service. That uh, it's great to see the apprentices are willing to do, and uh, they gain so much from it. And good congratulations to you, Bailey. Well done to all of the winners. We've got lots to get through on Bushmeat this morning, so let's get rolling. Getting back to the grassroots of racing. This is Bushbeat. Yankee Tango has raced away here. Bonnie Thompson's opened the field up before the corner. They've got 4.40 to go. Yankee Tango, the stable mate Rocco's in hot pursuit though. They were followed by Salesman who's trying to run on. Tunero's getting to the outside. We just love it getting up on the fence with Kingsbridge halfway down the straight though and Macaro's in the clear. Macaro is racing out after Rocco. Yankee Tango fighting on. Rocco and Macaro. Macaro on the outside. Rocco, Macaro in front and Macaro wins the cup from Rocco, Yankee Tango third and Kingsbridge was fourth. Then came Two Nero back behind them. We just Rob the Innisfail Cup on the weekend, another of the Country Cup's qualifiers going to Macaro, who I may have called Maquira at the top of the show because I was looking at my notes and did didn't write down the phonetics uh, of it all, but well done to uh, to all involved there in the call there, courtesy of the uh, On The Bit Racing Australia page on Facebook with Bluey Forsyth with the call there of Macaro for Kate Southam and Charlie Devilla. Yeah, I was looking at the name and I was thinking when I heard Bluey do that, I thought, well, I'll remember it by saying McEnroe or close to it, Macaro. <laughs> I didn't remember it all. <laughs> I tried to look for something in the name to suggest McEnroe, but I couldn't find it. But congratulations, Charlie de Villiers. And uh, great to see these stables uh, getting the representation started or getting the ball rolling. Uh, we'll be talking more about that when we join by Andrew Watts a little later on with the review from the uh, Country Cups and the Country Stampede because there is the, the situation that... Uh, Horses uh, do require to have a certain number of starts, and this is its second country run. Come off an unplaced Gordon Vale run, uh, this one in the Gordon Vale Cup, but uh, our North Queensland and far North Queensland correspondent, Peter Rowe, who can't be with us this morning, indicated that he was pretty unlucky in that particular race. But Kate Southam is riding uh, on a purple patch of form at the moment, uh, continuing to get winners, and I'm sure that Charlie de Villiers is going to place this horse to perfection. It's won from 1,500 to 2,000, so uh, Pete's only response to it was a little bit of a query about coming back to the 1600 metres of the final but uh, we'll talk more about that when we're joined a little bit later by Watsy and of course the other feature on the day there was the uh, the Johnson River Open Handicap a traditional race on that program and it was a country stampede qualifier Tony and Tambo's heart Janelle Ryan well here's another stable that's that's been uh, placed with horses to go to bush uh, battle of the bushes or country cups in the past Rachel Shred doing a good job bouncing back from uh, the injuries and booted home Tambo's heart after it won at Cairns uh, last run. And it's another one we'll talk more about. It's uh, qualifying clauses uh, very shortly. It defeated Hotshot Harry 
and uh, Dream I Can. And it was a convincing win because it came from the outside barrier, led all the way, basically, and was too strong in the end. Pete, uh, Peter Rowe indicated to me that it was one stable going extremely well up there, and that's Athel Ryan, and good to see he got another winner in the Class B with Red Denaro, the Red Dazzler four-year-old, won at Ewan and its only other run for the stables, and it's only had two wins, two from ten. Got up over Tavernue in Kensington Gold, and that was one of the uh, legs of the double for Scott Sheargold, who also rode Sunny Sailor for, for Renee Shalens, the Furio six-year-old defeating a Rothen Bell and uh, tapped the till. But Wanderson de Villa, he had had a, uh, an injury and forced layoff. Well, he bounced back with Chalie in the opening race, first race ride back. Sylvester, the epaulette, and they're starting to fire as well. The epaulettes, two wins and three placings since August. This galloper, Sylvester, de got up and defeated Sintan and Tell Everybody. And as we report just about every week, Tony, there's one lady jockey who continues to boot home a winner, and it's Bonnie Thompson. She's done it again. Mara Zara, five-year-old girl named called Art Artie Marty or, uh, by, uh, with uh, Lillian McCormack third at Ewan at its last run um, and it defeated Amelia's Rainbow and Craig Lee Rafferty and I think I might have really mucked up that name Arte at Marte uh, with that one and that was an interesting race uh, names across the board there up there at Innisfail and great to see that track look magnificent and I know Peter Rowe comments so uh, favourably about the conditions of the Innisfail track. We'll really look forward to seeing a TAB meeting down the track, I'm sure, with Innisfail, Tony. Yeah, I think so. I've got to send thanks as well to uh, Cole Truscott, the uh, Racing Queensland Country Racing Manager, because he's doing a wonderful job of keeping us up to date with all of the place getters through the uh, 2020 Country Cups Challenge and also the Country Stampede. And the important part, Cole, that you're doing for us is highlighting at the moment uh, those that may not be eligible for the final as yet due to insufficient non-tab starts. And that's going to be the case for Macaro and Tambo's Heart, both out of that Innisfail program. So connections there have got to start looking at where they can, now that they have qualified as much as they've won that particular cup heat or qualifier, uh, now they've got to look and make sure they meet the other qualifications and get to their uh, number of non-tab races up to scratch. Yeah, one, that's one thing I'm going to talk to Watsi about shortly is uh, whether that's an advantage or disadvantage. If now going in they've qualified, now going in uh, maybe they can space their race as well to meet that other qualifying clause, but mm. they're still getting the runs under the belt going into a final. Yeah, so, I, I think that would be the case uh, where at least you know that you, you've got a, a ticket booked to Brisbane basically, so now you can then start mapping out, well, where do we have to get our other couple of non-tab starts from? Hmm. And, of course, we had Cups meetings galore on the weekend, didn't we? And um, one of them came up at Blackall. This was the Baku Amateur Race Club meeting there on the weekend, the sixth event program. Crowd back to the races, 600 people on track. They had a great time down there in Blackall. And Premier trainer Billy Johnson on course. Uh, he produced a double on the day with a young apprentice that Tony McMahon mentioned to us, Malia Castle. Well, Castle. Uh, just came back from having her first child uh, after a year out of the saddle and she produced a race to race double on the day with uh, Muron taking the Stampede qualifier and this one led all the way very convincingly and uh, came off a Clermont win, defeated Wicked Express and Drayman. In fact the horses behind it just did not make ground on Muron. Very impressive 2.75 length winner. And then she uh, backed up with Best Guests and Billy Johnson to defeat Burden and Enterprise Grand um, in the Class 4. This Snippet Sun seven-year-old has been near the money at its last couple of runs. But uh, interestingly, on the day, we mentioned Emma Bell being the student of the year. Well, she was first uh, up in the class on the weekend there with Rodney Little with Purple Trumpet after two seconds at Clermont. The four-year-old mare by Warhead gained a start as an emergency. Uh, got up over Surrendre and done it again. And a very promising maiden winner in Portobello, a three-year-old filly by Scissor Kick, uh, trained by Mark Oates, Tessa Towns, and, um, and great to see her name, as we said, in those awards. So she booted that home over Great Brave and Taraja, but it was an impressive win more in store for that particular galloper. And, of course, uh, Dan McGilvray and Craig Smith, I thought this was a top ride. Dan McGilvray and Pirelli just made sure he got the uh, lead or shared the lead and then took the lead using the inside rail to advantage. Defeated Night in Paradise and Jarhead, but of course... The big one on the program was the Country Cups Challenge Qualifier, Strathmore Blackhall Cup Open Plate. And Matty Crop's been setting this horse, I'm pretty sure, for this particular uh, Country Cups uh, final. And he bought splits out, and the whole ownership team were there on the day. And Matty Gray, what a jockey riding in form in the country circuit. He had six rides for the day, one win, two seconds and two thirds. And he just placed this horse beautifully behind uh, Fully Maxed and Fab's Cowboy that were cutting at one another, one another the whole way. 
and splits powered away to win by 2.75 lengths over Fab's Cowboy. And uh, Boingo, Tony, so splits a very impressive winner of the Black Oil Cup as we're about to hear. Yeah, four wins out of his last six starts this preparation. Maybe he's been going seven starts this prep, but he's uh, he's been doing exceptionally well, Splits, and, and Matt has been placing him to ideal uh, conditions, and that was certainly the case on the weekend at Blackhall. They're clapping it on down the side and uh, fully maxed out in front by a long neck on the uh, Fabs Cowboy. Coming around the outside as Splits putting itself into the race. Boingo sitting nicely in fourth place. The mayor who loves the track so much. They come to the top of the straight and they're about to straighten up in the Black Hole Cup. Fab's Cowboy is gone at the top as Fab, uh, Fab's Cowboy has gone to the lead as Fully Maxed is gone. Splits is coming home hard and Boingo is battling on. Splits in the centre for the crop stable. Goes up, takes the lead. He draws away Splits. He came, he saw, he conquered. He took the Black Hole Cup by three lengths on the bush champ. Fab's Cowboy into third. Boingo, another tremendous run. Argento Perlo making up ground. Van Winkle back in behind them. Stylish Rob, one of the things I love about these uh, country cups is we're listening to some of those names go through there. We're getting to be so familiar with some of these horses that are going out and contesting these country cups challenge heats. And that's almost like a who's who of some of the, the northwest of racing there with splits coming up from the crop stable. But beating Fab's Cowboy, Boingo, Boingo Argento Perlo, Heroism, French Hustler, Stylish Luck, Van Winkle. There's some very familiar names in amongst all of those. There certainly is, and um, they they link into the form lines of uh, several other of the heats and other races going around, um, you know, behind horses like Valenti and so on. Um, and it's a quality sort of field. We, we, we can assess it well at our end uh, here in the Central West because we know the form so well. But when you see French Hustler, he's back in the pack and he's a uh, Birdsville Cup, a Longreach Cup winner uh, in that sort of field. You know that it's a strong field and uh, Split certainly puts himself in uh, in a good position. But I've got a, I've got a query that I'm going to discuss now as we welcome Andrew Watts. Wattsy, good morning to you as we come to the stage where we do the review uh, of the Stampede and the Country Cups Challenge. I do have a query about Splits. Your impression of what you saw out of that run at Blackall, firstly? Yeah, good morning, Tony. Good morning, Rob. Good morning, listeners. I thought the run was fantastic. Um, but I thought the rider, Matty Gray, was it was really heady, wasn't it? Because Fab's Cowboy and Fully Maxed were locked in a speed battle, which was setting it up for something coming from behind. Uh, Fab's Cowboy, as we know, who's defending uh, the last two years' uh, title there. So he goes well at the track. And as you suggested in the call there, Boingo loves... Um, Blackall as well. I thought the win of Splits was good and I think his form's outstanding going forward. I had the pleasure of calling him at Charleville back in uh, August where he won by 11 and a half lengths that day. He's a winner, isn't he? Uh, he's won 14 out of 44 with 18 minor placings. Um, the distance is right up his alley. He's now won over the mile. I, I think he's going to be he's going to be right in the finish there. In, in Brisbane come December, and he profiles well. He's a six-year-old gelding uh, by Sepoy out of Snow Blitz. Yeah, he's had... You've summed up a few things there. He's had four wins in his last seven, and as Tony mentioned, he's had seven runs this campaign since July 4th. From February to May, he also had seven, so he's at that peak end, I suppose. My query is the distance, because his wins have been predominantly 1,400, not the 1,600. In fact, a couple of the failures have been, if you call them that, have been at that distance. But I like the way that he's won on grass, he's won on sand, he's won on dirt, as you said, two wins at Charleville. And he's a horse in form. Now, the, the, the key thing is being able to maintain the form and the preparation going into the final. Uh, we were just saying before with Tony that uh, some of these winners, they've got the early wins, uh, but uh, where they may be in a position where they still have to qualify with the non-tab performances, that may suit them because they can just plan the race straight into the final. With a horse like Splits, you've got to maintain his form now, but you've still got, mm -hmm. uh, what, five weeks to go. Yeah, if you do look at his form, I mean, he's only had two runs uh, since the since that Charleville run at, at the end of August. So his runs have been spaced. Um, the bonus is, as you suggested earlier in, in the show, that he has qualified. So uh, maybe you look at something like a Roma Cup into the into the Country Cups Challenge. I'm not too sure, uh, but I'm sure this has been the target all the way along. And um, Matty Crop, he's uh, he's at the top of the tree when it comes to bush trainers. I'm I'm sure he'll um, I'm sure he'll have a pretty good plan mapped out. 
Yeah, they had the they had the whole crew on the course on Saturday, and they were pretty thrilled by the win. And and uh, Billy Johnson would be as well with the win of Muron. Now this is only a four year old, and it's had fourteen starts. He's a winner, five out of fourteen. He's had four wins and one unplaced his last five. In fact, what's he's gone from being a class two horse to an open company winner, and he just dominated this race. Uh, but what I found interesting about him, all his wins have been uh, from leading. He seems to enjoy that ability to roll along in front. Is he seasoned enough at this point? I mean, we're a long way away from the Stampede final, but is he seasoned enough at this point to be able to dominate the final trying to lead all the way? Oh, it's a tough one, isn't it? Um, he was purchased by the Palmers uh, middle of this year with this in mind. They bought this horse for a bit of money off Godolphin. And, and it's fair to say he uh, he hit the ground running. He, he won a race at Home Hill and backed it up at Charleville, Clermont, and as you said, at Blackhall. I'm not too sure about that race at Blackhall on Saturday as far as form's concerned. Um, we've got to get up to the 1,200 as well. Maybe that'll be a, a key uh, with him getting up to the 1,200. But as we know in the final, Rob, barriers are going to be um, all key, aren't they? I mean, you don't want to be sitting out in barrier 16 in the final trying to get across and lead all the way. So he might be a horse that, um, with that in mind, that will need that sort of one to nine uh, draw so he can get across and, and lead. But, uh, look, he's, he's very progressive. Um, and, yeah, as you say, he profiles well. He's a four-year-old uh, by Brazen Bow. So, um, yeah, interesting. I, I, I think he'll be a player um, if, if he served well at barrier draws. Now, I know one of the difficulties we have in assessing these horses, we're looking at different regions, different courses, and uh, we don't know the far north form like someone like Peter Rowe does, and he suggests that Tambo's Heart, the winner of the Johnson River Open Handicap, is a real live chance because he certainly has the ability... Well, he can come from behind this horse and he can win from the front, uh, as he showed, depending on wherever the draw might be. And when you consider he was fourth behind the Herovian in the new market at Cairns, uh, I like the fact he's won up to 1,400 metres. It means he'll be strong at the 1,200 metres. He needs two more country runs, though, Andrew. But is this the case, that that makes it easier? Or is it difficult with him because he's been up since the 4th of June with 10 starts this campaign? Well, it completely comes down to what's in uh, Janelle Ryan's mindset. I mean... Um, that's the thing. When, when you qualify for the Battle of the Bush, you know that's that's the aim of a trainer. Whereas these races, the Country Cups and the Sprints, they may just be a part of a, the the, um, the horse's program. I mean, the final might not be in in their thoughts necessarily. But as you suggested, uh, it was a very good win. He's an old war horse. He's a marvel, isn't he? He's won 16 from 78 uh, with 29 minor placings. He's been everywhere and. He's the sort of horse that you wouldn't be too concerned, barriers or anything like that. He can set up wherever he can come from the back, he can come from the front, and he's another one who knows how to win. Um, looking forward, he does have time. If, if Janelle wanted to get the runs in, I haven't exactly looked at the Northwest program, but you could space his runs out over the next five weeks to, to land um, and sit pretty in that final. But oh, it'd be a fantastic uh, final to see Tambo's heart uh, lining up. In the beaten brigade, uh, Hotshot Harry is another one in the same boat. Only had the one country start, so uh, if Tambo's wasn't to go, uh, Hotshot would have to find uh, a couple of country runs as well. The third horse is qualified, though, Dream I Can. Yeah, and uh, no matter what analysis we do, I think the horses we've uh, gone over today so far, and including the next one, Macaro, who took the Innisfail Cup, are all worthy participants and bring good form into the race. And here's another one. I like the way that these horses are on their way up. He's won from 1,500 to 2,000. Here's another one, Class 1 to Class 4 in his past four runs, uh, including the unplaced uh, Gordon Vale Cup. Uh, run and his biggest thing will be the ability to come back from the 2000 to the 1600 and I did see Charlie de Villiers has indicated they'll be will be mapping out a course to get to Brisbane so he will be headed that way yeah formerly with Ben Aaron's just the four runs with Charlie for three wins and uh, an unlucky run behind Rocco in the Gordon Vale Cup as you said just the one run to qualify and I think this horse will definitely made his, make his presence felt in Brisbane uh, Macaro. Uh, I like his run. I think he's a type of horse that has a little bit of tactical speed. He might be able to set Medfield. And, look, to, to know he can run the 2,000, we know country races, there'll be speed on. So if he can posse up somewhere midfield, uh, I wouldn't want to be laying down with 50 to go because I think Macaro will be coming. And he's a horse with with a lot of upside. 
It, it could be the year for the far north or the North Queensland area where in past years they haven't got into the, uh, the, the uh, first three or so. But, uh, and interestingly, both Tambo's Heart, that ability 1,400 back to 1,200, that strength at the finish important, as you've just said, the 2,000 strength at the end of 1,600, just could be the, uh, the key to uh, clinch these titles as we start to move closer towards it. Um, anything else you saw out of those runs, Watsy? Because we've been uh, summing these up as we go and I'm not going to put my neck out yet about uh, who I'm favouring at this point, Dave. No, neither am I, Rob, but uh, interesting to know, and I, I um, assume you'll cover it shortly, Deadly Choice is a good win at Mount Isa. He did it, uh, as we've seen him do previously, uh, in second gear. He'll, he's now qualified, and I believe he'll go across to Townsville for one last run before heading to Brisbane. He's going to be your favourite, and um, as we know, he's the benchmark uh, for, for country racing uh, as far as horses are concerned. Great summary again this morning and reviewing the Country Cups and Country Stampede, Andrew. Uh, we'll look forward to the continuation as we move to uh, the next on the program, which comes up this weekend at Gundawindi and Gimpy. When you come back next week, we'll look at those two meetings uh, from this Saturday. Thank you, Rob. Thank you, Tony. Good morning, listeners. Good on you, Watsy. Great to have you as part of Bushbeat each and every week as we roll our way through these Country Cups and Country Stampede qualifiers. And you're right, Rob, that was meant to be the Clifton Cup program, remember, this mm. coming weekend, and they've transferred that to Guns in Park at Gundawindi. But the Gympie Cup meeting will also form part of that. And the other meetings that are coming up this weekend as we have a look at the calendar, uh, racing coming up on Saturday at Charleville for the Central Warrego Race Club. Also, it's Ross Cup Day for the Isisford Race Club and meetings also at Gladstone and Richmond. Yeah, and we've uh, what's he touched on Mount Isa, of course, with Deadly Choices. Great to see, and he was uh, he was very kind to him, Dan Ballard, down to the line, one by three and a half over Wicked Wiki in level eight. But the, the story out of Mount Isa and Charters Towers is the Tanya Parry stable just continuing to blow them away with winners treble uh, at Mount Isa and a double at Charters Towers, where unfortunately the numbers fell away with jockey numbers. We'll leave that discussion for another day um, because it does occur during different times of the year where the pressure is there on meetings clashing and jockeys being available great great result tenure parry combining with keithy ballard uh opened up the program with such a drama queen uh with keith ballard real saga mayor defeating grand symphony and masking and another one coming off good form two wins two placings it's only four stable runs temerity and uh tenure and keith combined the Nakoni eight-year-old to defeat our hustler and uh warren bungle in the benchmark 45 after a second there its previous run then she combined with ray hancock with static lift which was with the billy johnson stable and this was the second run for tenure and it got up for a win there the eight roll by starcraft over christmas creek and in coronada so she had a field day out there but it was left to george tipping to take the last on the program with uh Charminar and combining that with terry trishaw back out there riding great to see uh, Shav uh shavgani into second and time for us into third and then over at Charters Towers, she produced the double over there as well. And uh, that came with uh, Trinity Bannon on Charlie Cat. We've heard his name going around in Cloncurry Cups. He ran third in that. He's a 10-year-old for 13 wins now over Mystic Eyes and Martial Art. And this was, of course, the Charters Towers Amateur Cup Open Handicap over 1,400 metres. So it's that time of the year where the Cups floweth over. Uh, and it was a race-to-race -race double because the previous race, she's had great success since she purchased Craigley L. Toner out of the John Mansman stable and he's had uh, three wins and a second from his only four runs at the stable and two wins and a second from three at this track this four-year-old by Citywide in great form and uh, Katarina Aho doesn't get many rides but it was great to see she was one of the jockeys that ventured to Charters Towers and defeated Sizzle Sun and Wheel Beat It um, the other winners there on the day Ken Maguire with uh, Pietro Romeo, they combined with a Jabali three-year-old Arrogant Heart, came off a Townsville fourth and a Home Hill at its second, defeated Benny Williams' Malongal Surprise in Clareview Saga. Of course, Ben Williams on his home track gets a winner with Malongal uh, Drifter Trinity Bannon, the Spill the Beans three-year-old taking that two from two on the track, by the way, and it defeated Tata Chilla and Hibachi Miss. And great to see Trinity Bannon. She got the double, as I said, with Charlie Cat and also Malongal Drifter. And Rick Nelson and Nairi Nelson combined with another sizzling that they seem to like the dirt and the sand. Uh, sizzling Sun defeated Fluidity, which is the Ewan Cup representative going into the Country Cups if it progresses that way. So Tanya Parry, the story of the day over two meetings, Mount Isa and, of course, up at Charters Towers. And, of course, Taroom was that area too where they struggled with the numbers, the numbers of horses, numbers of jockeys. But Cheryl Rogers produced a double on the day where the girls again rode the program. Cheryl booted home Tezza 
for uh, Douglas Tolbert, the more than great uh, horse that won its uh, first start in 11. Brutus was a winner for Isabella Rab Jones for Patrick Sexton, the easy rocking six-year-old over Petit L that's been travelling around the countryside doing well. Her option, Cheryl trained and rode this one to keep the faith five-year-old mare in the money at its last three, defeated a ramrod and smarty jack. And then trainer Bob Murray produced the uh, race to race double to wrap up the program there. And this was a transferred meeting as well, this to room meeting. Uh, My Certain, the poet's voice, came off Gladstone and Eidsvold placings to take the uh, zero to 55 over Malvagio and Pretty Song. And then he had Layla's lad with Nat Morton. Liam McCoy rode uh, My Certain. And then Nat Morton combined with Layla's lad, defeating Galapagos, the Tarim Cup winner. I notice he's in Thursday at Rockhampton in that Coral City uh, series. So they're backing up there. But the girls have done it again. And Cheryl led the way with the double out of Tarim. And as we talk about cups, well, there was one left on the sand track at Wandai. In fact, it was the second race on the program. And it was really run, won by a horse that does love the sand tracks, Marata. Robbie Farr combining with Barry Gill, the seven-year-old Equiano. Six from 47, two wins from its last four, defeated Palace Tycoon and Craigley Satina, and it was a convincing six-and-a-half-length win. So that cup wrapped up our cups for the weekend. But the other winners on the day there, uh, Shannon Stephan combined with Bill Melvin with a reliable man, six-year-old mare called Reliable Lass, defeated last start winner Dinny's of Suspect and Bolton Desire. And uh, as well, Diggity for uh, Isabella Tay and uh, Tom Maloney, the Equiano. This, it was a race-to-race double for that stallion, actually, as he sired Marata. Diggity defeating Kenford and El Nino's choice. First up since August. Um, before that, two wins, three placings. It's last five now, when you like, look back through its form. Then Nanango trainer uh, Kayleen Hamilton combined with Hannah Phillips with the Dream Ahead four-year-old Oakfield Comanche got up by a length over to Mr Noddy and uh, Sign Curve. And Felvira for Tim Back. Some of the, uh, these are a couple of names I haven't seen before, Tony. Kayleen Hamilton and Tim Back. Tim's at Wandai, home track. Steph Lacey rode this galloper for him. Defeated Clareview Spirit and Valar de Heeris, uh into third place. But the Wandai Cup for this year going to Marata for Barry Gill and Robbie Farr. I want to make special mention also of Tom Button with his training performance at the uh, program on Saturday at Rockhampton, taking out... Well, not just taking out both of the Capricorn Yearling Sale mm. Championship races, but Quinellering both of them, if you don't mind. The uh, three-year-old Guineas with Miss Lot 1 and the Silver Lady and the four- and five-year-old Championship with Flying Crackerjack and the Tax Accountant. So that's a fair effort to be able to not just bring home a winning double, but a winning double Quinella on that. And just on that, Rob, uh, talking of uh, two-year-olds and that kind of thing, this coming weekend... Uh, we're headed off to Townsville, of course, the Palarenda Stakes on Saturday uh, for the two-year-old Colts and Geldings. I see they had nine in the nominations there and something like 13 in the Phillies nominations for the Palarendas on the weekend. And those two interesting name runners are in there, Tony. Shrek donkey. and Donkey, and, yes. And Shrek. But there's another one to keep an eye out. He's got a bit of family ability, I think, and I hope I don't put the knockers on you, Stacey, when I mention that Rocket de Glory's half-brother, Summer of Glory, happens to be in the field as well. I'll have a bit of an interest to watch in that particular one, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck to uh, everyone who's racing this coming weekend, as we mentioned, with those meetings at Townsville, Charleville, Gladstone, Gundawindi, Gympie, Isisford and Richmond. Thank you, Rob. Been a great show this morning. We'll look forward to catching up again next week. Yeah, good morning, Tony. Good morning, everyone. And just uh, email me at barkersnews at optusnet.com.au with any great stories and be back next week as we love to do on Bushbeat. Good on you, Rob. Rob Luck and Andrew Watts helping us out with all the news on Bushbeat this week. Don't forget, if you missed any of the show, podcast replay available with a link through the Radio Tab Twitter feed. That's at Radio Tab Oz. And thanks to our good friends at On The Bit Racing Australia. They also put up the, uh, the Bushbeat replay for you each and every week at their Facebook page. So if you're not already on Facebook and checking that out each and every week to check out the best in country racing, you should do that. On The Bit Racing Australia. And, of course, the boys will have a big review of the weekend's action coming up on the show tonight. And that is Bushbeat for another week here on Radio Tab.